Okay, it is 10 o'clock. We are ready to start this. I'm so excited for this webinar. So we have Scott Ballard here, and he is here to present seven strategies for difficult times. And for, for a lot of you who have uh, perhaps attended a lot of Zenium's past webinars, we talked about compliance, we talked about the, the legal pieces of uh, what this health crisis has meant to our businesses. And I, I love this webinar, it's timely because now we're looking for strategies for getting through this and um, you know for aligning our businesses in the right way. So very excited to have Scott Ballard here with us. I'm Brandon Laws, uh, I'll be your moderator for today. So I'll be monitoring your questions if you have any throughout the presentation. A couple housekeeping items as people continue to come in here uh, and then I'll turn it over to Scott. Uh, this is an hour long webinar and we'll carve out time at the very end for Q&A. However, um, in talking with Scott earlier before we launched, we love engagement throughout the session. So if you want to ask uh, questions throughout, I'll be, um, I'll be monitoring those. So I might interject while Scott's presenting and uh, we'd, we'd love to uh, answer your questions as it's relevant for any of uh, these pieces that he'll be talking about today. So uh, feel free to use the Q&A window for that. Uh, this webinar is being recorded, so we'll send this out to you following the webinar, and we encourage you to share with your team as it'll be amazing content for, for you and your leadership team. And then for any other you know, free content or resources, visit zeniumhr.com forward slash content, and there's tons of articles, podcasts, videos, and then webinars just like this that so you can get on demand and it's free. So... Um, Quick introduction for Scott, and then we'll we'll uh, turn it over to him so he can go through this webinar. Scott Ballard is a lifelong business owner, starting in the sixth grade. And Scott, you're going to have to tell us what <laughs> business you owned in sixth grade. Um, Scott Ballard is a natural coach, full of encouragement, accountability, and questions to transform your business and life experience. Scott is a coach, author, speaker, and has helped his clients achieve the results they need while holding on to Scott's belief in them and their business. Scott does his coaching one-on-one -on -one and in group settings, both virtually and in person in the global marketplace. With 35 years of business ownership experience, Scott has experienced every kind of failure and pinnacle of success as a dyslexic, Business owner, Scott has questions, processes, and insight to deliver value, depth, and transformational experience that is unique and totally different in the global marketplace. Scott is a coach that has his clients value and they continue to engage with him as they go from success to success. Scott, it's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. It's, it's exciting to be here. And uh, thank you for the introduction and the opportunity to, to really share today um, from a lifetime of uh, going through some, some difficult times, as we all have. Um, I'm going to start a little different, Brandon, because you kind of led me to something that I think will give context uh, to this whole conversation. So as you said, I, I've been a lifetime dyslectic. Uh, some of you can relate to that, some of you can't, but in itself, it, it um, um, presents a lot of difficulties. So at a very, very young age, I had to become aware and develop strategies, even as a child, to overcome difficulties. So what, what I'm going to be talking about today, I've actually lived since I was seven years old. So these are really near and dear to me, but, but I want to answer your question or your thought, Brandon, which I loved. Um, how did I start in business in sixth grade? And so um, I really struggled in school. I had a lot of failures. It was really difficult for me. But when I got to sixth grade, uh, there was a new teacher that was brought in to teach that class. And it was, he was a first year teacher, Mr. Bacala. And he, he, we got into the first day and he took all the desk out. This was back in the sixties and we sat in rows of desk and some of you will remember that some of you don't, but, and he, the first day he took all the desk out and he sat them outside and he said, um, I'm going to, I'm going to have you learn differently this year. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this classroom into a business. Everything is a business. 
If you need a copy, you somebody owns that copy business, you pay them. If you want popcorn at lunch, if you want to rent a ball to play basketball, uh, we bought stocks, we tracked the stock market, we did all these things. So when we started, at first, I was like, oh my God, I'm just getting the reading and the writing down. And now they're going to this whole new thing. And it was a setback. I mean, it, it, it's really relevant to today. And, and then I started thinking about it and I started um, putting myself into it. And uh, we all started at the same place at the beginning of the year. And, and at the end of the year, I owned every business in the classroom. And I think I had most all the money and the wealth of the classroom by the time we were done. Now, what's funny about that is I still struggled, uh, you know, to read and write and do math and all these things. But there was something innately about me that I understood how to create value and how to do commerce and how to do business, even in the most difficult setting, which was a classroom for me. And so out of that are a lot of the strategies we'll talk about today. But I had to answer your question, Brandon. So, so that's a little bit about me. Um, I still have those challenges, um, but I'm deeply encouraged to share um, the muscles I've developed, so to speak, over a lifetime of, of living in a difficult place, which is living in a business world where reading, writing, talking to accountants, talking to attorneys, dealing with people with large contracts is, is not my greatest strength. So how do I deal with that and, and become successful? And so that's part of it. The other thing I want to tell you is I've had a lot of failures in businesses. And in my 20s and 30s, I tried, I don't know how many businesses, and they all failed. And then, and then I found a business, started a business at my kitchen table with $100 in an industry I'd never been in before. And we built it to um, the third largest seller of that product in the country in 42 states. Um, in 21 years. So I, I know the pain of, of failure and I know the, uh, what it's like to win and to scale and to go big. So uh, just a little context about me there, Brandon. So we'll, we'll jump in if you guys are ready. Let's go to, to number one. Okay, so um, during difficult times, there's a tendency for all of us to just think about ourselves, our problems, our, our challenges that, that we have as business owners, as leaders, as managers um, in our businesses um, as you go. What I have found and what I have seen um, that helps during a difficult time is to think about yourself as a hero. And what a hero does is a hero serves other people. So, one of the strategies that, that I want to impart to you, an idea that I want to impart to you today is that, that start thinking about as you manage, as you lead in your company, what a hero would do. And a hero really looks to serve those people that they're, that they're leading and looks for ways to be useful to them. So this is how we kind of get out of this mindset it is all about us and we actually start to create value we, is with what we call this hero mindset. So how we begin to do that is this idea of the person that's in front of you on the Zoom call, on the phone call, I know most of us are working virtually, um, think about them as the most important person in the world at that time. Be fully present with them and serve them and then watch how the difficulty kind of starts to fall off you as you create value for other people. Now, we can only do this if we reach out. So one of our points here is we have to reach out to people, even though it's different, even though it's awkward, even though it doesn't feel the same. We have to reach out. So we have to be able to be a hero. We have to take a risk. We have to go where nobody's gone to steal the line. To go where nobody's gone. And that's to reconnect with people in a deeper way. And how you do that is you reach out and it be about them. 
Now this could be a team member, this could be an employee, this could be a vendor, this could be customers. But, but try this with, in your situation as a leader and see what happens as you reach out, as you expand, as you look to serve them, as you look to be a hero in their life. Um, and then help them with whatever the negative, the obstacle, the barrier that they're having with this COVID experience that we're dealing with, help them to transform that, transform that into a positive in some way. It's easier to see somebody else's problem and help them. This is a leadership thing right now, I'm telling you, Brandon. It's easier for me to see your problem and help you turn it into a positive than for me to do that internally, right? So look for that. Don't be afraid to go, hey, what's your biggest challenge right now? That, that's leadership. That's it. You're not running from the problem. You're, you're going into it. And we were just speaking with Angela about this. There's a seed of opportunity somewhere in that problem, Right. And so, and so go with that, be the hero and take your eyes off yourself and serve somebody else and then see how you feel afterwards. Cause you're going to feel different. When I'm done with this webinar, I will feel better about this whole situation because I've actually been a hero to a group of people that are heroes to business and teams and customers and all over the, all over the place here. So that's what we want to do. Now, there's a lot of ways to do this. One of the methods that I use is I have a group of business owners that I text on a random but regular basis words of encouragement or questions that will invoke them to think about the situation in a new way. By the way, if you want to get on that, just reach out. Brandon has the information. But I ask questions. It's a very short text. And I'll ask a question that will make you think. Your mind is so powerful. If, if somebody asks you a question, it will immediately engage. And that's what we need to have right now. We need to have great questions which engage in this difficult time to create great solutions. So number one is to take your, take your, um, take your mind off yourself and go out and serve some other people. And that is that is critical to getting through this and actually getting, turning this into a positive. Here's another key, and you all know this is true because you're, you're doing it right now. 80% of the time, Brandon is thinking about Brandon. 80% of the time. So if I connect into Brandon and I say, Brandon, what are you thinking about? Or what's your challenge? Immediately what happens? Brandon goes, oh, he cares. He's leading me. I'm going to listen to him, right? This is huge. So we all know that's true, but we don't use it as leadership. We don't recognize when we engage with people that they're thinking about themselves. So meet them there. Start with that. Okay? So let's go to point number two, Brandon. Focus on your relationships. Okay, I'm going to say something right now that's going to be very controversial to all of you leaders, business people out there. If you're focusing on selling right now and hard selling people, this is very difficult because they're already in a difficult place and it's, it just makes the, the, the situation more awkward with them. Um, forget about you selling whatever it is that you sell and start to work on the possibility, the power, the relationship, and how you can serve them in their situation now. Become a solutionary, become a person that says, um, have you guys thought about this? Or I heard about this, this company or this business is doing this, and I heard about, and this might actually help you. Become that person that focuses on building them up, building that relationship. Um, and there, people are more open now to connection and to being coached and to, and to doing things like this than they've ever been before because they've been isolated now for, what are we on, month four or five? Four, yeah. Month <laughs> five. four, right? And so people are desperate for this. You've got to stop thinking about yourself and go, okay, how can I build that relationship with that employee? 
with that vendor, with that customer, or with that potential customer down the road, right? And go with the intent of serving them, helping them, building that relationship, not with the intent of trying to manipulate it into a sale, okay? So every time um, you, that you strengthen a relationship, the viability of your product or service down the road goes way up, right? Here's the thing. Here's what my coach tells me all the time. I, by the way, I have multiple coaches. I'm a coach that has a coach, which is a good thing. As serve, 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 serve. Now, here's what happens. When I serve Exenium and when I serve their people, it's really simple. When and if they ever need what we do, we are going to be automatically to the top of the list because we have served. We have given our best information, our best content, our best ideas, our best value to Exanium's customers, to their team, to their leadership. I'm not leaving anything out today. I'm going 100% giving you everything. Because that's how business really works. It's relationships that you serve into over time. They make long-term loyalty and persistence and lifetime customers. We all want lifetime customers, right? Well, this is how you get it. You serve, 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 to the point where they finally say, um, how do I pay you for this? That's the highest form of selling. And that's our goal is to do that, to be of such value um, um, that, that they, they want you to be part of what you're doing. Here's a question that you can say to serve. What's the one thing I can do to serve you today? Now that sounds over simple and people are like, well, people aren't, they don't care, but they're not going to test me. Ch I challenge you to ask that question to 10 people on your team, vendors, customers, clients, and have them not respond and go, you know what? It'd be really helpful if you could provide this, do this, uh, put me in connection with that vendor that you've been using for five years or, or whatever. I challenge you not to do it and not to see the result. Here's four L's of relationship building that we use all the time in our coaching. First, to create relationship, the number one thing to do, now listen to this, Brandon, this is critical for what you do, is to listen. Ask a question and listen. Albert Einstein said this. I wrote this down this morning, Brandon. You're going to love this. This is a quote from him. I have no talent. This is Albert Einstein. By the way, he was dyslectic. Mm. Interesting fact. Um, he, this way he said, I have no talent. I only have passionate curiosity about people and things. Arguably one of the most brilliant people in the history of the world. Be that person that listens and then learn learn about them, get to know them, right? You already know about yourself 100%. Why not learn about somebody else? And then this is going to be controversial. Some people are going to, this is going to be a big stretch and then love them in some way. How about that? If we're going to really have relationships, they're going to be lifetime customers and clients and people we work with. We, that's part of the deal. That's part of it. And then lead them in a way, if you have a, a solution, if you have an idea, if you have a thought that can help them from what they've told you after you've listened, learned, and loved, do it. Because now you've earned the right to do that. It's really powerful. Um, transform your business, your company, by being passionately curious about your team, about your customers, and about other people in your industry and watch yourself become a leader. A whole, Nick, the next level comes from that. All right, Brandon, number three, how are we doing on time, Brandon? We're, we're great. Hey, Scott, what do you think like the, for deepening the relationships, what do you think a, a good cadence or a method of reaching out to people and connecting with them? Because everybody, you know, for a lot of us are remote right now, what's a good, what's a good strategy from that standpoint? Yeah, I will tell you, since COVID, I have been doing this, this question to business leaders 
that's a simple question. What's your biggest challenge today? Uh, I have a series of them. If you want them, we can, we can Ooh. pass them on to people. And I, and Brandon, I, I'm simple. I'm old school. I was born in 59. So, I mean, I, I'm pre all this internet, all this, but I'll tell you what, a simple text to a leader that's like, they can read it in five seconds is, is a phenomenal way to say you care. I'm thinking about you. And here is a question that might actually help you get unstuck to take your business to the next level. And I, the response is blown me away to the point of I'm kicking myself. I didn't do this for years before. <laughs> right. But, but it, it's simple. It's direct. And, and then the, I'm not offended if they don't respond because it's a text and it's just right. a simple question. But what's ensued out of that is conversations, Brandon. Uh, people will call me, people will email, people will say, when can we get on a Zoom? Because I want to dive into that question because nobody's asked me that. And I want to have a conversation about it. And, 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 and a deep conversation is where all relationship really gets rooted and grounded. It becomes the future that we all want. Um, remember this, and I, this may be oversimplistic, but remember this, all business, all business, I don't care what business you're in, is based on relationship with people. Yeah. All business. Even in this high-tech, amazing world we live in, it's still about relationship, right? And so that's what, that's how we build that. Now, let me tell you a little story on Angela, which all you guys know Angela Perkins, so I'm gonna I'm tell her, and, and she has been amazing through this, but so I met her, she found me on LinkedIn, I think, and I met her, we had a conversation, and we really just clicked. Like, I was like, wow, she's really sharp. She really gets this. She can <laughs> click with anybody. No, no. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. Scott, you're amazing. <laughs> Angel's amazing too, though. <laughs> yeah, so, so we really click. And, and somewhere in the conversation, she told me that she was a runner. Okay. Now, I'd never met her in person. So this was all on Zoom, whatever she told me. So time had gone by, the holidays had happened, you know, everybody gets busy. And I was thinking, okay, how can I show her that I actually listen to her and that I actually care about what she cares about? Well, there's this company in New Zealand called Allbirds. They make these merino sheep wool shoes. Now, if you haven't tried them, we've bought in hundreds of pairs of these shoes. They're amazing. Uh, they're all organic. They're all naturally. It's, it's just amazing. I'm, I, I don't own any of it, but we're brave and kind. So, so what we did was we got her shoes. I, we sent her a pair of Albert shoes to, to run in, to walk in, whatever. So you have to be creative in order to build a relationship. Now, I did that going, okay, I know that's something she's passionate about that isn't work related, but she cares about. And, and I, think, I think what that does over time is we're very comfortable with each other. And, and of course, things got pushed back. We were supposed to be in March and then pushed back. But I wasn't worried about it because we had already made a relationship. We had already made a connection. We, had, we already have an understanding. And she kept saying, I apologize. I apologize. It's not going to be now. And I was like, I'm not worried about it because we have a relationship that's healthy and it's good. And, and I believe in what you guys are doing. And I think you get what we're doing. And so I don't know if the brand, if that answers your question. Absolutely. And it's funny, Angela even mes messaged me just offline. She's like, I could just show the shoe right now. I could come on the camera. Like, <laughs> but you guys made a connection and she'll always, yeah. she'll always think of you uh, because of that. Right. And, and uh, so, but you, you have to be, you have to do rule number one, Brandon, that's to listen. Yep. And, and, you know, you never know if you listen long enough, you're going to, there, there's always a connection somewhere. Sometimes it takes two or three interactions. Um, most of the time for me, it's one time and I'm like, okay, yeah, here's where I can relate to this person. This is where it really works. I think there's an opportunity to get creative too with, with us, with all the technology. I mean, somebody texted me yesterday with a note of appreciation. They handwritten a note to me and they took a picture and texted it to me. I'm like, that's, 
took effort, you know, r rather than just sending a basic text or whatever, like they, yeah. they wrote out a note, took a picture and just said, I appreciate everything you do for me. Thank you. It's yeah. like, wow, what an impact. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, I have a, a client of mine that does, he, he doesn't text, he does video and then he texts it to people. And it's a live too. video of him, you know, I, I'm not sure what app that is, but he does that and he, everybody opens it, you know, and, and, and you're right. It's, it's super powerful. We have to get creative because of COVID, because of isolation, because we're working at home, because all these things, we have to get super creative about that, but we can do that. We all know how to build relationships. And if you're wondering how, think of the best relationship in your life right now, I don't care who it is, and think about how you built that to be so strong. I, I've been dating the same girl for 42 years, okay? And so when I think about relationship or I'm not sure what to do with people, I think about, okay, we've been dating 42 years, we've been married 39. Okay, so I think about, okay, what's it take to get that kind of relationship, that long-term thing, it's the same thing that we're talking about here. Yeah. Let's not so separate what we do in business from our personal experience. Oftentimes those can really work well together in building, re building relationships. All right, uh, Brandon, let's go to yeah. three. Uh, focusing on creating value. Uncertain times make people less open to being sold uh, than ever before. We already talked about that. People feel right now out of power. Does, do, you, do you understand what I mean by that? They feel uncertain. They have doubt. They have fear. Um, they don't know what the future is. So look for ways in order for them, for you to provide value to them. Um, here's the three things that I'm going to talk about. Help identify and eliminate dangers. Um, capture opportunities um, or help them capture opportunities that they have, but they haven't done anything about. And here's the biggest one. Reinforce their strengths. Remind them of the strengths, the abilities, the talents, um, the, the uniqueness that they have that they can go back to and build on. That's super important. It's amazing how many people have lost their confidence in four months. They've been successful leading a team, owning a business, running an organization for 10 years, 15, 20, 30, 40. We have a client that's 50 years in a family business. And this has been a huge struggle for him because he forgot what his strength is. We call it superpower. Like there's a superpower that you have as a leader. Go back to that reinforce that help people identify if you're a leader and you have people that work with you or underneath you go to each one of them and and find out what their strength is if you don't know but help them find out and then help them to develop and design their work around their strength you want to lead people you want to create value you want people to want to go the extra mile for you to serve you well to to be about what the company's about do that it's, it's huge. Um, so in all of these relationships, we can be doing that. Um, here's a couple of questions around opportunity. What are the untapped opportunities at this time in your business or in your organization that you can do now because you actually have time or the resources or can shift resources to tap into that opportunity that's been on the sideline for a while? We all have them, we all have them. So look at that. What's the first step towards making this opportunity into a division or a new product or a new service that you can do? These are all steps to doing that. Um, as you think about uh, eliminating dangers, is there something you can do, something you can share with them? One of the things I've been doing, Brandon, is I have been, I'm a voracious reader, although I'm slow, I'm a voracious reader and I listen to audiobooks. I'm somewhat addicted to those two things. But when I find a book or I have a book, I'm always thinking, who would this book help? 
So I've probably sent out, I don't know, 10 books this month alone to different people. Some are clients, some are past clients, some are just relationships, some are people that I only met one time and I go like, that book's for her. And I'm sending it to her, right? And so think about that as a way to help eliminate. You may not have the answer to eliminate their danger, but there is somebody in the world, in the business world, in that world that does have that. So let's talk about that. And then at the bottom, if, if, if we serve people by eliminating their dangers, helping them capture their opportunities and identify what they are, and reinforce their superpower, their strength, what will naturally happen as, as we continue to work through this COVID thing and, and we go into the future is, they will look to you, they will come to you for whatever commodity, whatever product, whatever service, whatever it is that you do in order to get that. I'll say that again, serve them well now. They're, the greatest value right now is to serve people well without the intention of trying to make a sale. It's, it's the greatest value and we know that that's what we're, we're gonna do here. All right, Brandon, let's go to four. What books have you been oh. sending out this month? Uh, well, I've got quite a few of them here. So The Influential Mind, The Leading Brain, Never Lose a Customer Again, Appreciate, um, The Prosperous Coach, Stretch, which is a great book. Um, you really do tailor those books to the people, the relationships. Oh, yeah. You are, I mean, you are creating value for them. Yeah. It, it's, no different, it's no different than, than sending the shoes, the cool shoes in the world to Angela. Yeah. Right? It, it's the same thing. If I'm thinking about them, I am creating value for them, and that is a relationship that will be good for both of us for a long time. The moment I only think about myself, what happens? My problems become bigger. I become more stressed, more isolated, more afraid, more doubt, whatever. The world becomes smaller, and I feel like the sky's falling. There's 8 billion people on the planet that we can create value for. 8 billion. Now, none of us can get our minds around what that is, but that's a lot of people. And, and so we're just looking for people that are in front of us and how we can create value for them in their life at this point. Can I ask you a question about the, the eliminate danger part? Yeah. So when it comes to leading teams, how do we, how do we eliminate danger when maybe things aren't going so well in the business? Um, well, what, what, well, first of all, you know, part of eliminating danger is clarifying is being transparent and honest. This is where we're at. Without so free, it's well, not going to freak people out. Well, you're going to, if you're going to lead well, you have to be honest about where, where you're at. And that can be done in a transparent, but in an encouraging way, but you have to say, okay, this is where we're at. And, and so let's all come together and go, how can we get from here? this difficult time, this difficult place we're at to hear. Because together, you know, there's the African proverb. I've, I've been to Africa 30 times. And there's the proverb, you can run really fast by yourself, right? But if you want to go a long ways, you need a group of people. And that's how you go a long ways. So that's where you get back and go, okay, here's our challenge. This is really where we're at. Now together, how can we move how can we take this from a challenge to an opportunity okay so so that that's what that's the first step to doing it that's the first step to doing it beautiful yeah okay let's okay, go yeah let's go to four okay here's here's something that COVID has done as a gift for all of us and people are going to go oh there's no gift in this there's a gift COVID has allowed us to reset and, and make a new game of our business, our work, our what we do. So, so COVID has is, is, is put a stop and given us time to think, okay, 
what is the new game post COVID that we're going to play in our business? What is that? That is a fantastic question because I don't know about you, but I firmly know and believe without a doubt, things will never be what they were. The, the old is gone, right? And so we have to change, but in that change, we have to say, okay, what is our new game as this organization, as this business, what is the new game? And then start to define it, right? And so that's what we have to be thinking about, what that is. So here's the question, Brandon, that, that we're asking all of our clients or potential clients is, what has this season made possible for your business as a new game? What has this made possible? Very interesting. So we have a client, I won't disclose the name, but we have a client and uh, COVID happened and they do care in homes for mainly elderly people. Okay, so we all know what that is, you know, and, and you see that. And COVID happened and the lady, um, Janelle, that owns the company, her background is she was a nurse and a head nurse or whatever for 25 years. COVID happened and they started getting calls, people calling them saying, I don't want to send my mom or dad to the hospital because I'm afraid that's the sickest place there is and I don't want to have that risk. Can you help us in any way? Well, guess what? She started in-home nursing for people so they didn't have to go to the hospital. Um, that's an opportunity that came out of this situation and made possible for her that she had not thought of before, even though she had the experience, the education, the resources, the background to do it, and she shifted to that, and the business has just exploded. In fact, she believes the future of healthcare really is in the home. Between technology and the skill of people, and you recover and you're much healthier in your own home anyway. Fascinating. Like this is so, so super cool. So that's what we want to think about. So the second question, Brandon, is this, what if this really happened for you instead of against you? What if COVID happened? What if you thought that it actually happened for you and then you could learn, grow, change, shift, pivot, all these things that we've talked about, actually maybe it was for you. Like it unlocked a part of my brain to see yeah. the opportunities, yeah. Yes, absolutely, 100%. What if we just sat on that question, because I've set this out to business leaders, and I've got some very interesting <laughs> stuff. Like at first, some people are like, what are you talking about? I'm like, just sit on it. Because that unlocks the future. A couple of things around it. All that we want in our business, money, our goals, our dreams, or whatever, is in the future, Brandon. We can't change four months. But we can change the future and all the good stuff's out there if we actually believe this happened for us. Now, I know I'm super controversial with that, and I have taken some beatings <laughs> from people on calls like this going, You're, you've lost it. Yeah, I might have. So far, there's no hate uh, yeah, messages yeah, okay, yet. But I'm, just, I'm, I'm ready for it. I, it's okay. I actually think if you'll be honest, and all progress begins with being honest about where you're at and what's happened, if you'll be honest and you'll actually put that on, I think you're going to unlock some really cool things like Janelle has. You know, and, and, I, and I think it's there. Here's the history behind that. Think about all the companies that you and I know that were launched in 2008, 2009. So many of them. So, so I can name just a few, but Brandon, you know more than I do. Airbnb, Uber, um, telemedicine started then. Anyway, there's a bunch of them. And that really is what we're talking about. Is That's why we said, does this happen for us? Did it create the next Airbnb? And am I missing it by not realizing that that's what happened in this time? So it's a thought, it's a challenge um, to go forward. 
Yeah, I think, the ch- I think the challenge is in definitely clearing the danger so that you can open your mind to see those opportunities. And, a lot, you know, a lot of people probably won't be able to do that, um, whether it's fear, anxiety. So here's, here's Brandon, here's what I would suggest about that, because I, 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 I really hear you there. If you feel like you're, you're stuck, we call it stuckedness. It's actually a term in our, our coaching practice. If you're stuck in that, that danger, that fear, that doubt, the uncertainty, I challenge you to reach out to me. I'll invest an hour for you and I will get you unstuck. That's 100%. No, no fee, no whatever. I, I'm a professional unstucker. I can unstuck anybody. And, and the reason I can, Brandon, is that's not my own ego. The reason I can is because I've faced so many difficulties from – with my first memories of my life till now, you're really going to have to go deep with some deep stuckness to really stump me because I've been there. I, I have absolutely been there. And, and I, I, I offer that to anybody. And that's, that's a great question. Okay. So let's, let's go on and remember that we have God given abilities that can create these opportunities that can make us, um, a better and bigger future as we go forward. Let me say this. I said this to Angela and Brandon before we got on. In every obstacle, in every barrier, in every situation, there is a seed of a breakthrough if you look for it, if you will give your mind the power, it's, it's your genius, the power to actually find it. It's there. It's absolutely there. So people say to me all the time, gosh, it must, have, it must be terrible to be dyslectic. And you know what? My dyslexia has created more, quote unquote, personal and professional success in my life than anything else. From anything else. So you got to work harder for it. Yeah, but, but it, it, the seed was in the biggest obstacle, Brandon. The seed is in whatever your obstacle is in your organization, your business right now. There's a seed in there that really is about your best future. And we're, we're, we, we know that to be true because we've lived it. This isn't theory. This is 61 years of experience, right? Okay, let's go to five. Boy, we're, we are, Brandon, you got you to gotta do this for me. Speed up. Okay. We, we got 18 minutes. You're good. Okay. This is really critical. If, no, if you don't get anything else from this time, this right now, we're finding it to be so powerful for people. Focus on your progress today. Focus on your progress today. Um, choose this time to reveal your strengths. What are the strengths that you have in this situation today? And, and what is it that um, can take you to a better tomorrow, right? And so as we think about that, um, this is really like, if, if I'm not a runner like Angela, I, I, don't, I ride a road bike 100 miles. So I'm one of those crazy people that you see out there. And we've ridden bikes all around the world, me and my wife. We love doing that. Um, but this is like extreme training in the physical sense. COVID to business owners to leaders has been like the ultra marathon, right? It's been a four month marathon. Now you can look at that and go, I'm tired, I'm weary, I'm exhausted, all that. And I choose to look at that as this is the most intensive training you'll ever have for your best future right now. You're finding out your character. You're finding out your mental strength. You're finding out your spiritual strength. You're finding out you have new capacity. And every day you get up and you go into your business, you have won. Because remember this, there's a bunch of people that quit already. There's a bunch of and you have not. You're in the game. What what do they say? 99% of success is showing up. You've showed up in the worst possible scenario. You're still here. You're still working. You're still in the game. The greater the resistance, the greater the strength and the reward down the road. 
the harder you train, the easier it gets when you get into the game. We all know this to be true in sports, right? We know it. We see it all the time. It's absolutely as true in your business and your personal life as it is in sports. If you'll think of it that way, today's a training day. Today's a practice day. How am I going to get stronger? How am I going to get better? How am I going to build myself up so I can have a better, better future as we go forward? Make today count. You only have today. My dear mother is 87 years old, and up until five weeks ago, she'd never broken a bone besides having us kids, never been in the hospital, never been sick. Five weeks ago, she was chasing her dog across her living room, broke her femur, and she's been in the hospital three times in the last five weeks. Okay, so what this has really brought back to me, Brandon, is we only have today. What are the three things you're gonna do today that are gonna make the biggest difference in your life? Not 30, not 300, three. And focus on those and document those and get those down and celebrate those. We call it micro wins, right? Document them, keep track of them and celebrate. Here's the thing we're not doing in business right now. And Brandon, this is for Exenium. This is for everybody. I challenge you to start celebrating again. If you show up to work, now this is going to sound ridiculous. And that means go downstairs and sit in front of your computer. You, that's a win. Here's my question. How are you guys celebrating that? And how, do you, how long do you think you're going to run without celebration and not, and not keel over and die? We have lost the art of celebrating in, bis, in, bi, in business. We've, we've let COVID throw such a dark cloud over us that we have forgotten we're, that, that counting the wins, celebrating, is critically important to making it through the other side and to the better future. We have to do this. Um, here's one thing that we've given to our clients. We have a, a, a little thing, tracking wins. Before they leave their shift, before they get done for the day, they have to, before they're done, give the three wins to their leader, to their manager, to the owner. Every day it's required. You cannot clock out or check out or whatever you're going to do until you've done that. And if we're going to have a meeting, Brandon, and we're going to meet, our team's going to meet, every meeting starts with what are your wins? You can't speak or go into the meeting and be active part if you don't tell us what your wins are. Because I can't drag you up the hill. Because if you don't think you're winning, you believe that you're not. And if we're gonna conquer this, we're gonna come out better, if we're gonna do better and be better, we have to celebrate intensely, enthusiastically. And people say, are you like this all the time? And I say, yes. My girlfriend of 42 years said, I'm the most encouraging, positive person she's ever met in her life. Okay, well, I learned as a dyslectic kid in school, walking out time after time, man, if, if I crossed the street, that was a win. If I read the dog is whatever, that's a win. We've got to do this for people as we go forward. All right, Brandon, six. It remind, the, the point about the progress today reminds me of a book I read last year, Atomic Habits by James Clear. And the idea in that book was just every day, show up, get 1% better. And then over time, that just, I mean, exponential growth. It's unbelievable. Yeah. But you got to focus on today, though. Showing up and just doing the hard work, you get a little bit better than yesterday. And then, wow, 10 years from now, where, where are you going to be? It's unbelievable. Yeah. Okay, number six, how... how Focus on how we respond. Okay, a couple of things here, and I'm going to be controversial here, so Brandon, just, I'm just going to tell you. If you, if you are watching the news endlessly, you're not going to make it through COVID alive. It, 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 it is not going to happen. You can't be positive. You can't grow. You can't do the things you need to do if your mind is continually in fear. And I know that's controversial and some people say whatever. Find a way to get the news that you need in five or 10 minutes for the day. And then shut that thing off because it's killing you. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox there. Um, limit your exposure to negative people that complain and criticize about everything. Here's a better way that I say to it. Run away from them as fast as you can. <laughs> 
That's the controversial part, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just, I'm I just. Also, the next thing is take your cues from your dreams, ideals, values, operating pr uh, principles you have. Know what you believe. Know who you are. Be decisive. The most certain person always wins eventually. I'm going to say that again. The most certain person always wins eventually. I am certain about what I'm going to present here, what the value is, and what it is for, for this call. I'm more certain than everybody else. Because I've lived it for 61 years. This is important to know. No, make your choices in your business and your personal life based on those things you're certain about, okay? Take advantage, make this an unfair advantage for you over other businesses that you're competing with um, that they're being externally negatively impacted by all these other things and you're not, right? It's like they're walking up a mountain with a hundred pound pack on their back and you're, you don't have nothing on your back and you're running up the mountain. Realize that that's what's happening. Be, show up to work motivated. Show up to work with a smile on your face. Show up to work engaged. Be self-directed. Show up to work fully there. Don't have one foot out and one foot in. Nobody's going to follow you. Nobody's going to listen to you. Nobody's got, they're not, they already know you're double-minded. You're not, you're not there. Be either fully committed. I have on a note right here, Brandon. A hundred percent is easy. A hundred percent commitment is easy. 99 is really hard. A hundred percent in or get out. Anything great you've ever done in your life has been a hundred percent commitment. Go and check it out. Prove me wrong. It's absolutely true. Um, Think about this, when you're certain, when you have energy, when you have passion, when you have a smile, when you're celebrating all the wins, think about the influence, the positive influence you're having on your team. You know what? I want to be around Angela because she's always smiling. I don't really even need to know much more than that. In this land of COVID, a smiling person is like a beacon of light. It's like, holy smokes, yes, more. Be that person for your team. You know what? They probably don't have anybody else in their life that, that, that can do that, that can lead them in that way, but you. So what, do you, what if you work with people, because you said run as fast as yeah. you can away from people who are negative and bring you down. What if you either work with those people or they report to you? So if they report to you, then what is the question, Brandon? What would I ask them? You'd probably call them out. You'd probably say, why are you being so negative? Or, I mean, you're authentic and transparent. The, 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 the negativity is based in fear. Yeah. Right? So what are you afraid of? Yeah. Okay. I, I'm, I'm not an HR, you know, trained person. But, but what are you afraid of is a really great question. Because you're going to be the first person that's actually asked them that and then said, okay, tell me about that. Just by them speaking out, just by them getting clear about what that is, then you can go, okay, this is how I can lead you to a better positive place. Mm -hmm. We can't be afraid. There's a great book out called Difficult Conversations. Have you read that, Brandon? Uh, absolutely. Okay. It's talked about in there. It's great. We're not good as Americans of having difficult conversations. <laughs> no, we avoid them. We avoid them. You, part of great leadership is what? Is asking the difficult question. Yep. I'm not judging them. I'm not criticizing them. I'm saying I'm here to lead you. But in order to lead you well, I have to know what, what is that. Right? That's, that's part of leading. Now, if they vote not to change, then I have to, have, I have, to help them lead well to find a place where they can be that's my second responsibility yeah right a little bit of tough love there You're remember right. this brandon remember this as a leader they won't care until they know how much you care about them people aren't going to go and go to the top of the hill 
if they don't think they, that you don't deeply care about them. Here's management from a very simple dyslectic person after studying people 61 years. Care about them so deeply that they'll go to the end of the earth with you. And watch your company, your business, your life flourish. Okay, smile. It's the first step to leadership, smiling. Oh my gosh, it's sure free. Is. <laughs> it's free. Okay, so <clears throat> we're gonna end with gratitude. We'll make this really quick. Focus on what's avail available and be grateful for that. Um, take advantage of every resource. Take an inventory of all the resources you have in your business or in your organization. And then, then ask yourself, have we maximized everything we can out of that? We're doing this with people right now and they're finding, oh my gosh, I forgot about the inventory out in the third warehouse. And I'm like, okay, what is that? Well, it's a million dollars. And I'm like, okay, well, okay, let's do something about it. There's, there's resources, there's connections, there's technology, there's all these things. Take advantage of that. Um, I, already went, I already talked about celebrating the wins. Um, network with people network with other people and have this conversation about what can we do? What do we have that can help you? How's that for an interesting business strategy? Partnership, joint venture, we're, we're together. Together we're better. Um, think about this too. Are we complaining subconsciously, not an hourly, or are we being grateful for where we're at today? Have we fallen into the complaining uh, cycle or have we fallen into the grateful? What we are grateful for and appreciate expands and grows. One of my coaches, uh, Michael Hyatt, says that all the time. It's so true. That's what happens. So we've got to develop as leaders this idea of gratitude and appreciation to become the leader that we want to become during difficult times. Because the easiest thing to do right now is to complain. And there's a million things to complain about, right? That's the easiest thing to fall into. And we're going to choose not to do that. All right, Brandon. That's very profound. So let's say that again. What we focus on uh, for what we're grateful for will expand. Yeah, so what, we, what we're thankful for and appreciate. Appre mm -hmm. Appreciate is a, uh, is a word we don't connect to thankfulness, but it's actually a better word than thankfulness because we're appreciating what it is we have in this business or in this person or in this relationship or whatever it is. And as we really uh, uh, celebrate that and appreciate that, it gets better. It gets better, bigger, and all those things happen. And we need more of that now than ever. It's like an inoculation against COVID. Appreciation is. It, it's the wellness against COVID. It's a wellness against all of the barrage of, you know, it's the end of the world. You know, I'm looking out. I have in my office, I have this huge window that's behind us here. And I'm telling you, I am so appreciative of this heat. Beautiful. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, you know, it's, it's all of those things. It, it, and, and we have to become the leader that's appreciating. And what we'll find is if we, if we do this ourselves, we start to appreciate our team, our people that work with us. I start to see Brandon and I appreciate, man, he is super good with technology and he's always smiling and he's just, you know, he's an upbeat guy. I like to be around him. I feel good when I'm around him. You see what I'm saying? Yep. And it's in everybody, but if we don't practice it ourselves and we can't give it away, it's a free gift. It's a free gift. Take your, take your team, take a piece of paper, put everybody's name down. And I want you to write five things that you appreciate about them and then see how that changes, how you think about their, what they're, who they are and what they're doing. That's real leadership. It's easy for anybody to find the problem. Or don't, oh, they're doing this wrong. They don't. Well, that isn't. That takes no effort at all. 
turn that around, flip that around the opposite and say, okay, let's list out the things of our Brandon that we really appreciate because he's fantastic. He's capable, right? That, that's what we want to do as leaders. That's a phenomenal tool that we have in our belt that we're not using effectively. Love that. Okay, I'm, I'm going to ask one question and then we, we got to leave because it's right at the hour. Because we have the question from the audience and I, I, I agree with this. There's a lot of information in this presentation. If somebody's overwhelmed and doesn't know where to start, and they lead a team of other leaders, what do you suggest that they put into action as like that, that first step today? Mm -hmm. We're just talking about getting better today, focus on the progress today, showing up. What do you suggest that they do to make a lasting impact within their organization and the leaders that report to them? Brandon, that's like a layup. Thank you. Okay. Oh, if I was taller, I would dunk that, but this is super. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, yeah, it's, it's really simple. It's really direct. Have each one of your people today before they leave, before they check out virtually, wherever they're at, document their, their wins for the day and then share it with you or share it with the whole team if that's possible. I don't know. A lot of people have daily Zoom meetings, whatever you and then celebrate with them. Teach them how to celebrate the win of today. And it will do more to transform the future of your team, your business, your organization than anything else. And it's the simplest thing in the world to do, but we do not do it. We don't teach it. We have it in sports. We have it everywhere else in our life, but we don't do it here. Is that? That's great. And that you can do right now, Brandon. You can do that today. Scott, this is a pleasure. This has been a blast. This is Thank a blast. You. I love your energy. Thank getting, you. Getting a couple comments from people just saying they appreciated the energy a lot. They have a lot to think about. <laughs> and a lot to implement. There's a, there's a lot of good stuff here. So um, for those that are still on the line and had, didn't jump off yet, uh, Scott's web address is right there. Um, yep. Reach out to him. I'm sure you're on LinkedIn and other places too. So any other um, like lasting thoughts before we uh, close out? Yeah. Yeah. Brandon, I, I, I want to say this, you know, I've done a lot of this. I do a lot of speaking, whatever when you could, um, you've been a tremendous host. You've made this oh, super you. easy. Um, uh, this has been just a joy. And we're so thankful to Xenium, to Angela, to all the leadership uh, for this opportunity. And if there's any way we can serve or help anybody, um, that's what we're here to do because we actually practice what we do. And, and uh, it's just a joy to be able to do this. It made my day. Fantastic. Thanks, Scott. And everybody on the line, thank you. Have an amazing day. Enjoy the, if you're in Portland area, enjoy the sun. <laughs>